Hey everyone, this is Rob at The Retro Gamer. I wanted to show you some items today that I found interesting or I find interesting. Uh, first one I'm going to show you is a laser disc. And laser disc came out, it was pretty much a media between VHS and uh, DVD. And uh, the actual disc comes in a package. This is actually a Styx uh, concert, Caught in the Act. It's an old music group. I think they're still around actually. Anyways, they're about the same size, I think 12 inch as a uh, standard LP or record. And uh, in comparison, here's your uh, laser disc and here's a DVD. So the quality is not uh, DVD good, but it's definitely better than VHS in most cases. And the data generally on most discs is actually recorded on two sides. So when you're watching a movie, about halfway through, you're going to have to flip the disc around. So usually the movie will literally stop mid mid air, if you will, and then uh, you got it. You'll know at that point you got to flip the disc. Some movies actually, I've got one. Uh, I think Brazil. That one has probably like eight laser discs. So the longer the movie, and the better the quality the uh, more disc you had and the more times you had to flip them and on that movie it actually is so much flipping it gets kind of annoying sometimes so but anyways um, I'm playing this on a Pioneer laser disc player I think I picked this up a couple years back off eBay probably for you know 80 bucks or something like that um, I do have a pretty extensive uh, collection of laser disc I do like laser disc more than DVDs because uh, you can actually start it right up and you generally don't have the FBI warnings or if you do you can fast forward through them unlike DVDs actually yeah this one does have the FBI warning but if you watch I can actually skip right through it so uh, and then you have quick chapter scans which will go to your next song or portion of the disc so that's why I like it. I mean, with the DVDs, Blu-rays, and all nowadays, you have to watch these silly warnings and, you know, whatever. If somebody's going to record a movie that costs six bucks and go ahead. Who cares? <laughs> so, here are the other items I wanted to show you today. <clears throat> um, I'm not going to go into great detail on these other ones. Just wanted to kind of show them to you just for uh, memory's sake. Here is a Sony... Digital Mavica, I think. Mavica, Mavica. I'm not sure how to say that, but it's actually a one of their first digital cameras. And the media that it used was a floppy disk. So yes, it would actually you take the picture and it would write it right to the floppy drive. Uh, the neat thing about that is most computers at the time had a floppy drive, and you didn't need any special software. You could just pop the disk out of the camera and then put it into your computer's floppy drive and copy the files right over. And uh, for its day, it was actually pretty, uh, a pretty progressive type unit. A lot of the digital cameras back then had very small internal built-in memory storage, uh, you know, in the megabytes usually. And, you know, if you're lucky to get, you know, maybe 16 to 32, maybe 64 pictures on a camera before you had to dump it onto your PC, but back in those days, uh, they didn't have USB, so you usually had to use a serial cable. And transferring anything over serial cable was extremely slow. So the Sony camera offered a nice alternative to the serial cable connection, because uh, you just pop the disc out, put it in the computer, and copy them right over. So uh, these things, I believe, were probably three, four, five hundred bucks back in the day. So. Um, I'm not even sure if this one works. It has a special rechargeable battery, and I don't even know that I've got the charger for it. I don't think I do. So it's in really nice shape, but obviously not really worth the time to uh, try to get it to work. Uh, there's a uh, battery backup for the memory. I should probably pull that out so it doesn't leak. Um, but anyways, very nice little camera. Uh, the next item I want to show you is a Franklin Spelling Ace. And this is before, uh, you know, kind of like computer age. It, it was still when computers were around, I should say, but uh, people were still using typewriters and word processors. And, uh, you know, you would still, not all computers had spell check at the, in the time, or if they did, they sometimes would actually make you pay extra for spell check, like some of the Microsoft Works products and Word. So, anyways, uh, and people also use these for, uh, 
crossword. So if you knew the word, let's say, or you didn't know the word, but you knew some of the characters in it, let's say, uh, let's say, uh, cassette, okay? Or let's do something a little bit easier, tape. T, and then I think you did the little asterisk, and then P, okay? And then another asterisk. So if you knew the, sec the first and the third letter, you could just put it in, hit enter, I believe. Nope, oh, nope, that's the illegal wild card. I don't remember how to do this. Anyways, I'm going to clear it. Let's uh, type in Tennessee wrong. T-E-N-A-S-E-E -E -E or something. <clears throat> Hit enter. It usually did take a while to actually come up with the list, but they were pretty accurate. There we go. Tennessee. So, I wish I could show you the... Uh, the way it would work, you don't see games, anagrams, confusables, anagrams game, hangman, hangman game, jumble. So anyways, this one had a bunch of games in it. Uh, but there is the ability to put in partial letters of the word and it will actually come up with a list uh, for the crossword people out there. So those are pretty cool back in the day. They usually ran for about $50 or so. <coughs> Excuse me. And the last item today uh, is a JC Penny stereo. Actually, no, it's not stereo. A cassette player. It's a mono cassette player. Um, I got this off eBay for ten bucks. I liked it because of the silver. Uh, obviously, not real silver. Uh, let's say aluminum brushing. <laughs> There's your volume control, your bass trouble control, uh, stop, eject, play, fast forward, rewind, and record, and it actually works. The sound is actually uh, very good for something like this. These were generally more just for uh, dictation and uh, generally recording. The sound on these uh, mono cassette recorders usually weren't that great, so but this one does sound pretty decent. Um, it does include the manual, which you don't generally see, and the box, which is pretty cool. Um, I, upon opening the box, I noticed that there were a few things. There's the strap for the, uh, like a shoulder strap. There's this little plug in here, and what this actually did is you would put it in the uh, microphone jack on the side here, and if you had something on a tape, that you didn't want any longer but you wanted to reuse the tape you could actually uh, rewind the tape back to zero put the plug in and hit record and let it run for you know 15 30 minutes or however long the tape was and it would literally just it would be nothing right it would blink the tape back out so you could either do it that way which you know put pretty excessive wear on the recorder um, or back in the day they did make bulk tape erasers and those were basically uh, round or I'm sorry, wound uh, copper uh, coils that you plug in and it has a switch and you just basically zap the tape kind of like a electromagnetic pulse or something but it would wipe the tape out and uh, that's usually if you did a lot of taping back in the day you just buy one of those for you know 30 40 bucks so you didn't have to put the wear and tear on the, uh, the recorder itself so anyways uh, like I said, the manual uh, is kind of cool. Like I said, since you don't see them much, kind of go goes over all the features with you. Shows you how to uh, stick a pencil in to take up the slack on the tape so the recorder didn't eat the tape. There was a picture here I didn't understand. Um, there was a standard cassette, and then don't use this tape, and I don't really know what that tape is because I've never seen anything like that before. Um, I'm really not certain of what that is, and they don't really go into detail about it, but I found that pretty interesting that they had that picture, because uh, back in the day I was really into, you know, audio tapes and all, and I, I just don't remember any cassette tape being different than any other. And for those who uh, may not remember or never used a cassette tape, uh, there were little tabs on the back of the tape, and let's say that you recorded your favorite, you know, group on side A. Uh, you would pop out the little plastic tab, and that basically would make the interlock mechanism on the cassette player not engage on a record mode, so you wouldn't accidentally erase over the uh, tape. 
Now if you broke out the tab and you still wanted to record on it, all you had to do is just put a little piece of masking tape on it and then that would actually let you record uh, over what you had on the tape. And then here are the parts inside the tapes. You have the tape heads. Uh, the main one was the reed head. I'm not sure what the second one was for. I don't, maybe that was record or erase. You had the capstan, which was the spindle, which the motor was attached to, and then the uh, pressure roller. So the tape actually would go in between these two, and that's how the tape would, uh, would stay at a constant speed. And that's about it. So anyways, I appreciate you watching, and uh, if you enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And have a good day. Take care.